morning, good morning. Saturday it is. A beautiful day. This is a weekend. We are very grateful for the grace of God. Now, this is the last day of the week. When we look back, we can be able to count on God's blessings. You know, brethren, we need to always carry a spirit of gratitude. We are getting into times that there are so much and so many mamas, and especially some come because these, they are inevitable, not because men are choosing, but at least sometimes we are pushed by life from every side, and you realize that people are full of complaints, full of mama in every way from light, left, and center. And it's true, life is issuing us with issues and that uh, nobody would have imagined. But even in the course of all those things, my brothers and sisters, I want to remind you by the grace of God, do not allow yourself to be carried away and forget that which God is doing, that which he has done, that which he is about to do. I want to remind us, we always need to carry a spirit of gratitude, a spirit of thanksgiving, for it could have been worse, my brothers and sisters. Yes, things might be strained, but you know what? Because we are alive and by the grace of God, and because Christ lives, we're going to face tomorrow with courage, with confidence, not because we have confidence on ourselves, on about the things surrounding us, but because our confidence and faith is in our God. No wonder the Israelites were reminded that one of the things they needed to carry every moment and every time, even when they were in times of battle, they were always reminding themselves, others trust on javelin, others have put their confidence and trust on chariots, but our help, our help as the appointed people of God, our help as Christians, our help, my brother and sister, is in the name of the Lord. And for that reason, I want to remind you that as we come to the close of the week, maybe things have not worked the way you wanted, or the things the way you had planned. Maybe something intercepted you on the way. But even now, I want to remind us, may we end this week with joy, that even as we go into God's presence tomorrow, we enter with praise, with thanksgiving in our hearts, for He has been our help, for He is our help. For he will continue to be our help because he changes not. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And therefore, we can trust him because he changes not. And therefore, as we count on our blessings, may we be reminded we are not alone. God is with us and God will carry us through because he is faithful and he is a loving and he is a good God. Now, brethren, as we come to the summary, remember the things that we have been able to raise, even as we continue to thank God for the grace of commitment to, his, to the kingdom and to the service of Jesus. It is a beautiful thing to be committed to the service of God, the service of our God, the work of the loyal work of the kingdom. It is not in vain. No one who served God faithfully no one who committed himself faithfully to God that he was put to shame. Always God has fought the battles of men and women that have been faithful. Even in the scriptures, God has not only blessed those people, he has blessed their generation. When we commit ourselves fully to the kingdom of God and we are willing to savagery or even what we call holding nothing to the cause of God and to the cause of the kingdom, God always follows to bless us. Now, brethren, we have been able to deal with benefits. Now, the physical benefits. And we saw that the Lord allows those who commit themselves fully to the kingdom to enjoy and eat the good of the land. Remember, we talked about the spiritual blessing that we grow closer to God. That it is, when we commit ourselves to the kingdom, to the service of the kingdom, one of the greatest benefits is like we grow closer to God. And it is true. When we have fellowship with God, we become friends. You remember Jesus telling the disciples in the book of John chapter 15, even as he was saying that I will not call you no longer, I will no longer call you, uh, I will no longer call you, um, uh, that at least you are, um, you, you, are, um, you, are uh, you are, you are people who are servants, but I will call you friends. Why is he calling them friends? It's because 
He has grown closer with them. He has fellowship with them. They have learned from him. He has guided, counseled, and also taught them. And they have gotten to a place now of closer relationship. They are not just serving him. They are not just servants, but now they are friends. They are friends. They are co-workers with him. And therefore, that is the greatest benefit. By the way, if you ask me, the greatest benefit we got in service of the kingdom is getting closer to God. Because when we find God, we find everything. When we find God, we find eternal life. When we find God, we find cover. He is our Jehovah Rohi. He is our shepherd. When we find God, he became the banner of our victory because he's our Nisi. And therefore, when we find God, we find all things. And therefore, it is important to continue enjoying God's blessing. But we also talked about the social benefit, that we also are able to find the social capital, that even in the course of service, because service to men is service to God, we also find that at least we are finding men and women that the Lord is bringing and putting them around us. And therefore, they also become a blessing in return. Ask me, I will tell you, I've enjoyed a lot of many, many blessings coming from men. God has allowed me to serve men and men have served me. Men have become a blessing to my life. And therefore, by the way, when you hear that we are able to find social benefits, it's about when we totally and faithfully commit ourselves to the cause of Christ. God uses men to also become a blessing. And even you are able to find people that can even be able to sacrifice on your behalf. People who can come and hold your hands when you need them. People who can be able to knock doors for you. I was listening to one of the uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, preachers that I love listening to. They are great teachers of the word. And uh, he was saying an amazing thing. He was saying that God uses men to open doors. It's amazing. And I was following through and I realized it's true. Because even God used Mordecai to open a door for Esther to join the girls who later were chosen and she became a queen. God used Esther to open the blessings of the children of Israel not to be destroyed and to be eliminated. God uses men to knock doors on your behalf. And therefore, by the way, never take anything for granted. As you serve people, as you serve even some people, you may think that they may not give back. By the way, you should always remember commitment to the service of the kingdom is able to bring social benefits. When you build that social capital, it comes back knocking. And also, lastly, I just want to remind us that I just want to be able to briefly this day also talk about the relational blessings. Now, social blessings and benefits and relational benefits, they are intertwined because both of them are dealing with people and especially the way you relate with people. But the relational benefits are more deeper and closer. And allow me to pick it from the highest level of relation in the human life. And this is what we call marriage. Now, allow me to say this. Now, when I talk and I bring the setup of a marriage, when I want to talk about the relational blessings and benefits we get from commitment, it is true to know that God has been able to lead and command us and even to give us instructions. And the instructions are that when we relate well with him, we eat the good of the land. Now, I want to give this figurative of a marriage. It is true, by the way, every marriage that becomes beneficial and become a source of blessing to our lives is a marriage that men who are in that marriage and women are committed. By the way, for you to find your marriage as a place of refuge, for you to find your marriage as a place of fruitfulness, for you to find the marriage as a place of joy, for you to find marriage as a place of peace, for you to find marriage as a place of building you, molding you, and allowing you to, to release your full potential, for you to find marriage as a place that make you the best version of who you are, then one thing is true. You must be committed to that marriage. You know, one of the things that people sometimes 
have made a mistake imagining that you can be able, you can imagine that you can be able to find refuge in a marriage you are not committed to. You know, people love to see people work together, love together, but they fail to understand that so much has been done, has been given in, so that they may be able to get the benefits. And for that reason, it is important to understand that when you see a committed husband and a committed wife, what they find after that commitment is that they find back by God's grace the beauty, the joy, and the fulfillment of that institution. And therefore, it is important to mention and say this, for us to find these relational blessings and benefit because of commitment, they come when we are able to fully commit ourselves to the kingdom of God that we may be able. And one of the greatest relational blessings we get is when we are committed to hear and obey God. It translates to our new careers of relationships, starting from our families, our marriages, our lives, and all this stuff. Allow me to read in the book of 1 Peter, and I'm going to read a longer portion, chapter 3, leading from verses 9 to 14. 1 Peter chapter 3, leading from verses 9 to 14. The Bible says, Do not repay evil with evil, or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to these you are called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do what is good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the lashes and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now, brethren, this is a very good advice to the church from St. Peter. And Peter is lighting to the church, reminding them about when we are committed to the cause of Christ, there are things that we must do. Number one, we must learn not to pay evil with evil. Number two, we must learn that by God's grace, men who are committed to the cause of the kingdom and to the statutes of God and the commandments, there are things that they don't do. They are never insultful. They are not ever insultful. Number three, they are men who speak what is true. They are truthful people. Their tongue does not carry deceit. They are not deceitful. And not only that, but their tongues also, they keep their tongues from speaking evil. They are not malicious. But what do they do? That they always turn away from evil and do what is good. They seek peace and they pursue it. And Peter says, and therefore the eyes of God are upon these people who do what is right. The righteous. Now, allow me to say this. One of the greatest benefits that we can receive when we commit to God is to be in a peaceful relationship. Now, let me talk to your marriage and your family this morning. And these are very amazing things that we need to always carry. And I just want to say this. May the Lord help us that we become men and women who do not pay evil with evil. When something happens and goes long, please, let us not carry a spirit of competition or trying to compete with, with each other, trying to make other people feel bad or hurt them because they hurt you. I am finding a very awkward thing that is happening in the world today that people are hurting each other willingly. I have heard people who say when they have marriages, they fall into unfaithfulness. You hear somebody says, I will repay him. And then they go out of the marriage imagining that they are fighting with the past, the other, the other, mem the other spouse. But do you know what they do? They invite the devil. They invite the devil into their marriage setup. I've seen people who plan evil about their brothers and sisters because you know he did this, I'm going to do this. Let us not by any means pay evil with evil. One of the things that is also destroying institutions is the tongue. People who are deceitful, they can even make stories, stories that are lies. They can lie about other people. 
Others are so deceitful. They can even tell you something somebody did and they are sure it's not true that they did because they want to build a seed of division and a seed of enmity. But let me say this as I end. Men and women who follow God's word, who are willing to be committed to the cause of Christ, they do good at all times. Even when evil has been done to them, they choose to do what is good. They are not, ins- they are not insultive. Even when they are insulted, they do what is right. They remain faithful men. They remain committed to the cause of Christ. They remain faithful servants who are willing to give fully to the kingdom of God. Do you know what happens? They are able to create, to create good relationship. From their lives, their relationship with themselves and God, they are able to keep a good relationship with the people around them, even the same in the family setup, even in the church, in their ministries, in their places of work. And at the end of the day, the benefits comes knocking because the benefit is they are able to enjoy life and enjoy peace and harmony even in their lives. May the Lord bless us, brethren, even as we appropriate by God's grace the benefits of God, the benefits of commitment to the service of the kingdom, the spiritual benefits of relationship with God, the social benefits of being able to relate with men and especially to live and to love our neighbors, even our enemies, and to build a social capital. The physical blessings, because when we commit to God, the Bible promises we are going to eat the good of the land. And finally, the relationship, the relational blessings and benefit. These are the benefits that we find from our very relationship with God, relationship in our circles, even our marriages and our families, relationship with our colleagues in our place of work, that we become men and women that find relational blessings because we have been able to be committed to the cause of Christ. And when we get committed, we are able to find all this blessing. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you to grant you God's mercy. May the Lord cause you to be committed to the cause of Christ, even to the commit to the commit to the cause of Christ and even of the ministry of God. May the Lord cause that as you commit yourself, that your labor in the Lord may not and may never be in vain. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.